Again. Okay, perfect. So, uh, yes, I'm born in a small village uh, northwest of Montreal, about 50 kilometers from Montreal, province of Quebec. So I'm French Canadian, as you may uh, hear. <laughs> so uh, uh, we lived just in front of the church of our village. And my mother, who was a pianist, not a professional musician, but say, she played the piano and she, she taught the piano to her children. We were seven and, and my family. And so my mother taught me the piano when I, I was nine years old. But she was playing the organ on the Sunday mornings. And we had always recordings of organ playing at home, of orchestra and all kind of classical music. But the Sunday was organ. And so I was already, you know, uh, very, very interested by the organ. And then when I went at the college at 17, um, we had the choice for a second instrument and I chosen the organ. And then after I fell in love, I fell in love with the organ and I switched the piano for the organ as a, a first instrument. And then at 19, uh, I became a full-time student in organ. That's my organist story. So yeah, when I was about 15, you know, I always liked to draw, you know, to do some drawings and painting and to do things with my hands, to have a pencil in my hand. And so at 15, I, I, I felt a kind of, I felt compelled to, to write music. I love creation, creativity. And so I just composed uh, for myself and I showed my pieces to my mother and she was very encouraging. And so it never left me after that. I always wanted to study composition. And when I arrived at the Conservatoire when I was 19, um, I met um, my organist teacher who was also an improviser and a composer. And it's it, Raymond Davelui. And Raymond Davelui was composing an organ concerto at that time. And so I just fell into the, you know, the magic, uh, the big, the big, um, uh, composition. Uh, I don't know how you say in English, but uh, I never stopped composing. And this teacher, Raymond Davalui, taught me the composition for free during seven, eight years. He didn't ask me any penny. And he was also my organ teacher. So it was a kind of global training that I had. And for me, it was really, really good. I was born in Kansas and reared out there and did my undergraduate degree at one of the um, state universities in the Kansas system, not, not University of Kansas, but one of the other universities in the system. Uh, and actually I'm a little bit similar to Rachel in that I was torn back and forth between piano and organ. And I ended up doing a double concentration, which meant I slept very little <laughs> during my undergraduate years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it was worth it I, because I, uh, my my piano teacher when I was growing up had been an extremely thorough technician, extremely thorough, gave me extremely thorough grounding and technique. And my college teacher, when I went, even though they did not know each other, his own background was very similar, and he continued that. So I ended up with actually a very advanced piano technique, and that's kept me in really good shape because, like, when I go someplace. Uh, like when I came here even, you know, and need to, to get acquainted with an organ and that sort of thing for um, spending six or eight or nine hours in a day practicing, I never wear out physically. My brain does, but, but uh, <laughs> I never wear out physically. And uh, then after, um, after university, I went to the army for three years. And then when I got out, I knew by that time that I wanted to do organ and church music. So uh, everything after that was either church music related or organ performance related, uh, you know, and uh, I, I ended up doing, you know, studying organ at Eastman School. And uh, that was a, that was a treat because really for the first time in my life, once I got there, I really was able to practice for all of the hours I wanted to <laughs> without being too, too distracted. <laughs> Sure. Um, let me talk about the whole second half, which involves Rachel's piece, but I won't, I won't talk directly about that at the moment. Uh, we have on the program, there are four pieces listed. 
the uh, the first all of four of the pieces that are programmed there are by organist composers who have played on our series uh, on our music for great space series one is by jerry hancock an american he is he passed away a few years ago but one of the most brilliant improvisateurs uh, in the organ world during his life and uh, it's a little set of variations on uh, a hymn tune, which is very familiar to many, to most Americans, really. Uh, All hail the power of Jesus' name. And it's, uh, it'll be a familiar melody, uh, but also with his own very uh, unique harmonic vocabulary and, and writing the variations. And then uh, the second piece is a beautiful little lyric lullaby, uh, Taiwanese lullaby by Chelsea Chen who played here just a few years ago and who's, uh, some of whose ethnic background, she's American, but some of her ethnic background is Taiwanese. And she's taken, uh, in numerous of her compositions, she's taken um, some Taiwanese melodies or Taiwanese themes and built on that. And then there's Rachel's piece, of course. Okay, if I can uh, begin, I can set up. Uh, I compose a lot on commissions since uh, about uh, five, six years. It's almost uh, exclusively on commissions. And what I love about this aspect of composition is that it's always very personal. It's uh, a commission is something for a special event, yes, but it's a piece that's going to, to stay in the repertoire anyway. But it tells a story. A commission always tell a story. And I think that music has to tell a story. So uh, for example, this commission by Music for a Great Space, uh, when I played, Audrey told you that I played a, a recital in 2010, maybe 2011 at um, Christ United Methodist Church for uh, Music for a Great Space. And I was, um, I, I lodged in the house of Lucy Ingram and Lucy was so welcoming. And uh, I think that Henry, her husband, uh, passed away just a few years before. And so I heard a lot about uh, Henry Hingren, who was the co-founder of this music series. And so all this was imprinted in me. You know, when I received the commission one year ago, I thought, oh, it's, it's, it's fascinating because I played there. I knew the organ. I knew Audrey. And Audrey already premiered my organ concerto just a few years after. And so I had really a connection with all this place, all the story of music for a great space and the organ. And so um, they wanted a piece, of course you wanted a piece uh, who was celebrating the 30 years of, so a joyful piece, a celebratory piece, uh, a piece who, who was going to be virtuoso because Andre Lash is a virtuoso performer, a great musician too. So all these conditions were so clear to me. And uh, um, it was also a piece to, in, in a sort of way, in memory of Henry Ingram at the same time, because uh, we wanted to commemorate also the co-founder of this series with Lucy. So I asked Lucy, you know, to depict me, the personality of Henry again, to remind me his many facets. And so it's just got me started in, in this piece like that. So for me, it's very, it's a blessing to compose on commissions for all these reasons. Well, first of all, it's very scary because you know, the, it's, the first, you're, it's the first appearance of that, first hearing of that composition by anyone, you know, uh, when, when one premieres a composition, it's just like, it's very scary because you feel like that's the, it's like the first impression. It's like introducing someone to someone else, you know, first impressions. And it's like, it's got to be a good impression, you know, because you want the piece to live. And um, so that's, it's very scary. It's also very scary because, you know, in most cases, the composers are going to hear it and you think, oh my gosh, <laughs> what if I play a wrong note? <laughs> I hope I'm not a scary composer. <laughs> oh, you're not. You're not at all. No, you're very welcoming and you're very easy to be around. But it's just, you know, the human condition. We don't want to, we don't want to ruin it for the composer. Um, but it's, I have to say that uh, I think that um, 
Rachel has really captured the celebrative nature of this occasion. It, it really comes through. It's a very celebrative piece. And in the middle section, which is very lyrical, Rachel, I have to say that your ability to write melodic lines is exceptionally strong in this piece. Thank really you. Is. Thank it's you so much. It's very, very beautiful. Um, and I also, um, um, Rebecca, I hope I don't embarrass Rachel, but uh, I, Rachel, I know you well enough to be able to say you have a sort of playful spirit. You know, you do. You have a very playful spirit in your whole life. I can, you can tell even from your face. And the, the piece in places, there are moments that are very playful. And I have to say that yesterday I was practicing, you know, uh, in a transition section, one of those is, is uh, marked. Actually, you have a mark, I think, playfully in, in one place. And I was practicing that section. And I literally, when I practiced, I, I started to giggle. I started to laugh because it's just <laughs> such, so joyfully playful. Um, it's a very celebrated piece, and I and uh, one of the things that's important for composers to remember is to try to use the resources of the organ as well as possible. And it's been a big plus to ha have Rachel writing this when she's played on this organ and remembers it clearly because she has really exploited the resources very, very well. Uh, one of the most frustrating things is when someone who's maybe a really great composer, but they're not an organist and they don't understand what things feel like and how they go together on the organ. Um, that can be very frustrating. Uh, sometimes pianists will write as if they were writing for the piano and it doesn't work the same. And um, it's, it's great when an organist composer such as Rachel writes a piece because they write for the organ, no matter how difficult it is. And I will say very openly, and Rachel knows this, it's not an easy piece. You know, one has to practice it, but it's, it's, there's nothing there that doesn't make sense on the organ. Everything makes sense on the organ. You know, it's it's obviously a really, an organist wrote it. And that's very gratifying. 